so good morning students uh, let's proceed with uh, today's lecture uh, so just a quick recap of what we had done uh, yesterday in yesterday's lecture and then we'll uh, move to, uh, to to today's lecture so in yesterday's lecture we uh, recapped about the lecture before that on uh, cumulative distribution function that is cdf uh, you can see that on your screen uh, the CDF uh, helps us in finding the probability at a particular point and uh, it is name, uh, named as cumulative distribution function because uh, if you want to find the total probability then you accumulate all the probabilities at every point and obviously the total probability is going to be 1. Uh, it is known as distribution because this probability point uh, is distributed at different points. So on the screen you can see uh, it, this probability would have a value at x1, x2, x3 and x4. So a very important property of the CDF which we discussed yesterday uh, was this property here which I am going to start here. So if I want to find the uh, CDF between two points x1 and x2 then all I have to do is just subtract the two uh, the CDF at the two points that is the higher point minus the lower point. Right? So this was about the CDF and then we moved on to the probability density function uh, which is basically the derivative of the CDF and uh, vice versa you can find the CDF by integrating the uh, PDF. Uh, so if the limit of limits of that uh, of the integration fall between minus to plus infinity then we say that uh, uh, it is nothing but the total probability and hence the total area under a PDF is 1. So this minus infinity basically means that we have not yet started our experiment whereas the plus infinity states that we have completed all the experiments, right? So the total probability is always going to be one. Uh, the use of the PDF is uh, in terms of this particular property here, where you can also find the PDF uh, starting from uh, the point negative infinity to a point X. So this will give you some probability like 0 0.8, 0 0.9, but it will not give you one because you have not gone till negative uh, till positive infinity right then uh, based on that we have solved two numericals so you can see n1 and we uh, found the uh, answer there and then we also solved uh, we also solved another numerical and then we solved another numerical which was an exponential uh, kind of numerical right okay uh, then before ending yesterday's lecture, we started discussing about uh, the types of uh, random variables or the types of uh, signals in general which uh, uh, one may encounter. Uh, so based on that, uh, we started discussing about what is known as the probability mass function, which is basically used for discrete random variables. So I was telling you the difference between the continuous random variable or a signal and a discrete uh, random variable or a signal and you can see uh, on the uh, left hand side that I have drawn a continuous signal which is uh, uh, called continuous because uh, its value is changing with time at uh, with at all instants of time. Uh, so that kind of a uh, signal or random variable would be a continuous random variable or analog signal. And for this we use a PDF because we are integrating. So you can integrate the PDF between let's say 0 to 10 as uh, it is mentioned as an example here. And you can then find the integral to get a value. On the other hand, if you are dealing with a discrete signal, the signal on the right hand side, this signal here, then you can see that this signal is occurring only at certain instants of time like 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 there is no signal at 1.5 or 2.5 right so the, these kind of signals or random variables are known as discrete random variables and uh, they are denoted as x of n where n is the discrete points n is again time but it is discrete time so there is no concept there of 1.5 1.4 2.5 2.4 so it is just 1 2 3 4 5 right so it is a, uh, so n basically represents the discrete instant of time and instead of the integral, we now start using the summation, right? So uh, summation from let's say 0 to 10 and you find the PMF, the probability mass function. And obviously like the integral, 
which is which will give a value of one between minus two plus infinity. The summation from minus two plus infinity will of the PMF is also going to give us a value of one, right? So now having done that, uh, let us uh, look into the details of PMF and then uh, start solving few of the problems, right? So uh, you must remember that the PMF, the PMF is for discrete, discrete random variables, right? And the PMF of a discrete random variable X is defined as So if I just write PMF here, it is P I. I is in the subscript and you have P of X less than equal to X I. So these points I would be discrete points. So you'll have one, two till some value N and these will be representing discrete outcomes. So the outcome at one, outcome at two, outcome at three and so on till outcome at n. So basically what this equation is telling us is the probability PI which is associated with a discrete random variable and that is denoted by the PMF there, right? So uh, the concept is the same like the PDF. Only thing is that instead of a continuous random variable, we start disc uh, uh, discussing and dealing with the discrete random variable and discrete outcomes, right? So what are the properties? So since the concept is the same, the properties also are similar with the differences because of, uh, you know, it being discrete. So the total probability, the total probability of all outcomes of discrete random variable is always going to be one, which basically can be written as a mathematical expression. So if I is from one to let's say the last value is N, then P I, which is equal to now if I substitute the value of I as P one, since it is summation, you have plus P two plus P three plus so on till the last value P N then this total is always going to be one, right? So that's what we had done in the PDF. So if I just uh, on the side write the PDF, we had written that from minus two plus infinity of the PDF, fx of x is one, right? So minus two plus infinity is the limit for the PDF. And here for our uh, discrete part, the limit starts from i equal to one till i equal to n. Right? So that is like minus two plus infinity for uh, the PDF and this total is always going to give us one. Right? So the concept is the same. So let me erase that so that there is no confusion there. So, and uh, these I that is one, two, three, all that is going to represent the uh, number of discrete outcomes. So uh, that is uh, the first property. It's a very, very uh, important uh, property and uh, uh, the, the, there is no as such other property. So let me remove the second part and let's see how we can get the CDF. How we can get the CDF of a discrete random variable. Okay. So in uh, some books, uh, so, uh, some links on the website, this is also defined as property two. Right, but I don't consider that as a property. It's up to you if you want to consider it as a property. Right, the most important property is uh, going to be this property here, property one. Right, so I'm just going to erase this. If you want, you can consider this CDF also as a property. So the CDF for a discrete variable or of a discrete variable, f x of x will be, if I start with i equal to one till the last value n, then this will be. PI that is the probability multiplied with U of X minus XI where U 
is a unit step function. Okay. So uh, I don't know if you are uh, taught about unit step function yet in signals and systems, but a unit step function looks like this. So since we are dealing with discrete, let me write this in this form. If this is n, then a unit step function starts at value 0 and it goes all the way till the last value and our last value is n. Our last value is n and at all points, at all points, at all points, its value is 1. So if you consider all the points, so at 0, its value is 1. At 1, its value is 1. At 2, its value is 1. At 3, its value is 1. Till the last value n, its value is 1. Right? So in a discrete format, the unit step looks like this. Correspondingly, correspondingly in the continuous format, therefore I have written t and u of t in a continuous format, the unit step starts at a value 0 and continues till infinity with a standard value of 1. Right? So if you compare the bottom part here is when, when we are dealing with continuous and the top is when we deal with discrete. Right? So that is about the unit step function. Now if you see this part here, if you see this part here, we have written it as u of x minus xi, which basically implies that once you start putting the value of i, so let me put the value of i as 1. So for i equal to 1, this uh, function u of x minus xi will become u of x minus x1, which implies... Yeah. Any questions? Yeah. Anyone, any questions? Okay. Uh, so let me just repeat this quickly. Uh, so we are dealing with the function u of x minus xi. So when i is 1, if I take i as 1, if i is 1, then this function becomes u of x minus x1, which implies that u of x has been shifted to the right by a value x1. What does this imply? This implies that, let me draw here, if this is what u of x looks like, if this is u of x, if this is u of x, then if I am doing u of x minus x i, then I'm moving this entire signal u x by a value x i. And this movement is happening to the right here. So if you compare the two, or let me redraw this diagram one below the other so you can understand clearly. So if you have u of x and u of x looks like this, you have, uh, it has a value of one starting at zero, right? And now below this, if I draw u of x minus x1, right, we are taking that example here for i equal to 1, then this means that I am shifting u of x to the right by a value x1. And this will, the amplitude or the y-axis value will be 1, right? So what does this fx of x imply? What does this fx of x imply, right? this value here. What does this imply? This basically implies if I start putting the value of i, so if I put i equal to 1, let's say for example, then I'll get p1 u of x minus x1. That means I will shift the unit step function to the right by x1 and multiply it with the corresponding probability. Since it is a summation and the next value will be 2, I'll have plus Next value P2, U of X minus X2. That means I would have shifted 
u of x to the right by a value x2 and multiply with the corresponding probability. Similarly, so on till the last value, which will be pn u of x minus x. Right. So this is what it means. And then using that equation, we can draw the graph. Right. So we'll solve a numerical and you will understand uh, much better uh, what exactly this means here. OK, so in general, in general, you can have uh, you can define the unit step function u of x minus x i as 1 for x less greater than or equal to x i 0 else or otherwise and this function unit step function looks like this. u of x or if I draw u of x minus x i, then I would have moved u of x to the right by x i. So this value is 1. The next value that I get is having an amplitude 1, but this is x i plus 1. So on till the last value, which is infinity and this is x here. And for all of this, x i is greater than 0. So that's how the unit step function would look like. So this is how we can write the CDF of a discrete random variable. OK, now the analysis is not complete since till we do not do the PDF of a discrete random variable, right? And we already know the uh, relation between the CDF and the PDF. So if I can, if I have CDF with me, I can always find the PDF, right? So next is the PDF of a discrete random variable, right? So the PDF of a discrete random variable is defined as fx of x i equal to 1 to n this will be discrete and you have the probability pi. Now you have a function delta x minus x i where this function delta is an impulse function. The impulse function looks like this. Let me draw it on the left hand side. The impulse function looks like this. If this is delta of x and this is x, the impulse function has a value of 1 at point 0. So this impulse function exists only at one value that is x equal to 0 and it has a unit value at that time, right? So below this impulse function, now let me draw. Let me draw what happens if I shift the impulse function. Right, because here for the PDF we are writing delta of x minus x i. Right, so for this PDF, if I have to write delta of x minus x i, delta of x minus x i, this basically means that I'm shifting the impulse function on top by a value x i to the right. Therefore, now I will get the impulse function having a value of 1 at point x i. So you can see that we have shifted the original impulse function to the right by a value x i. Right? Uh, the reason for this is this. fx of x, fx of x, that is the PDF, is a derivative of the CDF. And and the derivative of the derivative of a unit step function is an impulse function. On the other hand, on the other hand, integral of an impulse function is a unit step function. Okay, so this is a standard result. 
uh, which you will be doing in signals and systems the derivations also uh, we are we are only using the concept uh, the final result here okay. so this is the final result which i am using here that the derivative of a unit step function is an impulse function whereas the integral of an impulse function is a unit step function right so how do we mathematically define an impulse function so you have delta of x minus xi will be equal to 1 it has a value of 1 for x equal to xi which implies which implies which implies that impulse function exists only at one value for all other values it is zero for all other values it is having a value of zero okay so this is the theory part of uh, uh, the probability mass function and how it can be uh, you know stated in the form of uh, uh, the CDF and the PDF and uh, using the unit step function and the uh, impulse function. Now let's look at uh, some of the numericals based on PMF and uh, we'll get more insight into what we have done here. Let me draw a line here. So uh, the numericals based on PMF are always going to be in the form of a table because you are going to deal with uh, uh, discrete values. OK, so. Let us take the first question. So this is the first numerical for the day. Given the data. given the data in the following table okay and i'll draw the table uh, let me draw the table here you have the value x you have p of x equal to x and you have x a x b x c the, these values are 0 0.24 0 0.32 0 0.44 and if you total them out if you total these values out you will see that the total value is one because these are nothing but the probability values right? so the total is one okay so having given this table our job is to there is uh, there are two things that we need to do one plot the cdf and the pdf And second, write the expressions for the CDF and PDF. So these are the two things that we need to do. Okay, so I'm uh, I'm hoping that you are sitting with uh, a pen and pencil, and if you you have noted down this uh, table because I'll have to scroll down to uh, uh, present the solution to you, right? So it will be difficult for us to keep coming back to this table. Okay, once I scroll down. Okay, so the uh, numericals based on PMF are always going to be uh, in the form of a table like this, and you will see that the total probability that is uh, when you add 0 0.24, 0 0.32 and 0 0.44, that total probability is going to be one. Here. Right. So uh, how do we approach a problem like this? OK, so uh, I'm hoping that you have noted down the table. 
because I have to scroll down, uh, scroll down and redraw this table again. OK, so uh, note down that uh, uh, table. OK, so now let's see how do we approach this problem. Right? So the very first thing is we rewrite the table. So the, we are given the value of uh, X. We are given P of X equal to X, which is nothing but the probability PI. So let me quickly rewrite those uh, values. So you have XA, you have XB and you have XC, right? So these are the values which are already given to us and the corresponding PI value is 0.24, 0.32, and 0.44 and we know that this total is 1 right so this this data is already given to us to this data we make an addition and you can see that the value of i the value of i because if you recollect uh, pmf is in the form of a summation starting from i equal to 1 to n right so i need to know the value of n so if I, if for for your quick reference i'll write this you have i equal to 1 to n of the pmf right so i know that the pmf is going to start at 1 which is this value here right but i don't know the value of n so always in the problem i need to find the value of n that is the last value and i can see that uh, this this particular problem is ending at 0.44 so you have 1 2 and 3 right so three values therefore in this problem n becomes 3 Right. So we make an addition to this table and write the PMF as for I equal to 1, 2, 3. So instead of N, I'm now writing 3 and you have P. Right. What does this mean? This means the first value is 0.24. What will happen to the second value? It will be P1 plus P2. That means it will be 0.24, the first value plus 0.32 and that value is uh, uh, 0.56 and what will happen to the third value the third value will be the addition of 0.24 first value plus second value plus the third value which is 0.44 and this total will be 1 right so i'm writing the pmf this is nothing but the pmf here so this this is nothing but denoting the probability mass function right so what i have written in uh, this particular uh, row and this particular row is for your understanding right now okay because we need to understand how we are getting these values in general you don't have to write the values as it is uh, all you have to do is write the first value 0.24 then write the second value directly that is 0.56 and then lastly write the third value which is 1. The last value is always supposed to be 1 because it is total probability. If your last value is not 1 then you have gone wrong. Okay so that's how we uh, make an addition to the table right. So let me re rewrite this table now. Uh, I'm hoping that you have understood how to write this. So let me rewrite it. So now your second value I'm going to write this directly as 0.56 and the last value as 1. So this will now be your table. OK, now. Next is we need to draw these CDFs and the PDF, right? So you can draw them on the same graph one after the other or you can draw them as a, a separate graph. It is up to you. OK, so let me uh, let me draw this. Uh, let me draw the CDF and the PDF one after the other. So I'll start with the PDF first. Uh, in the graph, it is very uh, important that you write the X axis and the Y axis very, very clearly. Right? So X axis would be X and the Y axis would be small FX of X because I'm denoting the PDF. Now, let me scroll up and show you how the PDF is written. So PDF for a discrete random variable is always in the is always in the form of an impulse function and the impulse function has values of one. 
and it occurs only at one instant, right? So in this uh, theory, which I had shown you, you can see that the impulse function occurs at value x equal to zero and has an amplitude one. If you shift it by a value xi, then it will shift to the right by xi and it will still have a value of one, right? Now, let me scroll down to the table. So you can see at the from the table that the probability 0.24, the probability 0.24 here is occurring at a point xa. The probability at 0.32 is occurring at a point xb and the probability 0.44 is occurring at a point xc. Therefore, taking that data, now I can represent the PDF. So, I will first represent the first point as xa, that is the first point. Next, xb and lastly xc. And since it is a PDF, this will be in the form of impulses and these impulses will have their corresponding value. What are those values? They are specified in the table. So xa, for xa, the corresponding probability is 0.24. For xb, the corresponding probability is 0.32. And for xc, the corresponding probability is 0.44, right? So you can see that from the table, we have denoted the PDF in the form of impulses at three different points, xa, xp, xc. And if you summate all of them, your total probability is going to be one. That is the most important property of the PDF. That is the total area or total summation, uh, depending on if it is continuous or discrete uh, of the PDF is always going to be one, right? Okay. Next, let's plot the CDF. So I'm plotting it just below the uh, PDF here. And I'm denoting this as Fx of x. So this is the CDF here. Okay. So I'll just take the same points xA. I'll take the point xB. And I'll take the point xC. Now before plotting, let's uh, scroll up and see how the CDF is written. Right. So the CDF is written in the form of unit step function. And the unit step function has a value of one starting at x equal to zero and it remains one till the last point that is infinity. If you shift the unit step function by some value x1, then this unit step function will shift to x1 to the right and it will continue to have a value of one till infinity, right? So we'll use this same logic here and try to plot the CDF, right? So, if you look at the table, if you look at the table, the first value that we have at xa is 0.24. Then what happens is, then what happens is, at next point xb, we get a value of 0.32. However, we are plotting the CDF. So what should happen? It should cumulate. It should cumulate. So at xb, at xb, we will not be plotting 0.32. We will actually be plotting the cumulation of xa and xb. That will be 0.56. Then at xc, we will not be plotting its value 0.44. Rather, we will be plotting the cumulation and that cumulation will be 1. So this is the difference between the PDF and the CDF. In the PDF, we directly plotted only the corresponding PI values, which is given here. Whereas for the CDF, we are going to plot the cumulation, that is the summation value, that is here, right? Let me plot that and it will become much clearer to you, right? So in XA, so at XA, we have a value of 0.24. This remains as it is till XP. At XB, we get a value of we get a value of 0.32 so 0.32 plus 0.24 will become 0.56 and it will remain as it is till xc so this value is 0.56 right then at xc 
we are getting a value of uh, let me see 0.44 therefore 0.44 and 0.56 will become 1 therefore starting at xc this value will become 1 okay so now you can see what the difference is okay so cdf will be the accumulation whereas pdf will just be the value okay so this is how we plot the graph for the cdf and the pdf when it comes to discrete random variables okay the next the next part that we need to do is to write the expressions so to write the expressions so let us first write the expression for the pdf fx of x now fx of x is always written in the form of an impulse function so therefore we are going to have i equal to 1 to 3 because there are three values and you have the probability pi delta x minus xi delta x minus xi the cdf is written as fx of x for i equal to 1 2 3 pi unit step x minus xi so that is how we write the cdf right so i'll give you a minute and uh, you can go ahead and expand these equations and see how you can write the pdf and cdf just take a minute and i will then come and write the equation and uh, then you can check whether your equations and mine match, right? You just have to put the value of i as 1, 2, and 3. And since it is summation, you need to add them. So just take a minute and write the uh, expression for PDF and CDF. So I hope you were able to write the uh, equations. Now let me also write the equation and uh, you can check with me whether uh, you, you have got the same equation or not, right? So let us uh, expand the first equation. That is the equation for the PDF. And uh, this equation will now become, uh, let us first substitute the value of I equal to one. So P1. So from the table, P1 is 0.24 impulse, that is delta, X minus X1. The first value is X1, which is XA. The point is given to us as XA. Then, because it is a summation, you have plus. The second value, which is given to us is 0.32. And you have impulse X minus the second point, which is XB. And then last plus the last value that we have is 0.44 impulse x minus xc. So that is how we can write the equation for the PDF in the form of impulses. Right. So all you have to just do is uh, substitute the value of i as 1, 2 and 3 and then proceed. Okay. Now. When it comes to CDF, again, you can do the similar process. Only difference is that instead of impulse, 
we are using the uh, the unit step function, right? So let me write the equation here. So the first the first value which we have is P1. That will be 0.24 unit step of X minus the first value, which is XA plus the second point, which is 0.32 unit step X minus the second point, which is XB plus the third point, which is 0.44 unit step of X minus X. Right? So this is how we can write the expression for the CDF and the same thing can be also uh, seen graphical. The same thing can also be seen graphical. OK, so this is uh, this was an important question. Uh, it was also uh, one a similar kind of question is also uh, there in the model question paper, which uh, we do had uh, uh, shared last year. So you, uh, we had to find the PMF uh, later. We'll also solve that uh, model question paper and questions like this. Okay. So this was the first uh, numerical. Let us uh, take another numerical of similar type. And uh, I, I'll urge you to solve most part of it. So that you are able to understand how we can uh, uh, find how we could find the CDF and PDF for a random variable, a discrete random variable. Okay. So the question is uh, the same. You need to uh, plot the PDF and CDF and write the expression. So I'll give you the table and then uh, based on this, you can uh, draw and uh, write the expression, right? So the table looks like this. You have value some K or let let us take capital K. You have another value Y. K. You have probability of Y K, K. So the values which are given to us are. 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. And YK has uh, values as 2.1, The probability there is 0 0.2, 0 0.21, 0 0.19, 0 0.14, and 0.26. So this is what is the table which is given to us. Okay. The first thing that you need to check is uh, what is the total probability? OK, uh, a confusion which could occur for the students uh, in a problem like this is what is this K? What is this K here? What is this YK here and what is this probability here? OK, so let us be clear. This K here has nothing to do with our problem. It is only like a serial number. So you have serial number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's all. OK, the values of K. What is important is YK. That is the random variable Y at K. This this is having the points. So this is the point. So when you, when you do Y of. Uh, when you do, uh, let's say if you are writing the PDF, so you'll be writing delta of y minus yk. So this yk will be used in y minus yk, right? So yk are the points by which you are shifting the impulse or the unit step function, OK? Then p of yk is nothing but the probability. And as a check, this total has to be 1 because it is total probability, right? So the very first step, as I told you, is. You need to summate and find the probability. 
you need to submit and write the probability right so we'll write the pmf that is summation now instead of i we are using k here right so you have k equal to you start at 1 and how many points are there there are 5 points so n is 5 so k equal to 1 to 5 p of y k right so the first probability is 0 0.2 the second value is 0.2 plus 0.21 therefore i'll get 0 0.41 the third is 0 0.41 plus 0 0.19 that will give us 0 0.6 the fourth is 0 0.6 plus 0 0.14 which will be 0 0.74. The last is 0 0.74 plus 0 0.26, which gives us a value of 1, right? So the total probability turns out to be 1 here, right? Which which has to happen, which has to happen, right? Because the total probability cannot be less than 1, and uh, right? So th that is a check that we are getting here, okay? So next is we need to draw the, the PDF and the CDF. So, I'm hoping that you have noted down the values here. OK, so let us draw the PDF first. So you have F Y of Y. The first value is 0.2. And it occurs at a point 2.1. The next value is 0.21 and it occurs at a point 3.2. The next value is 0.19 which occurs at 4.8. The next value is 0.14 which occurs at 5.4 and lastly the last value is uh, 0.26 which occurs at 6.9, right? So how can we write the expression for the PDF? So the PDF is written in the form of uh, impulses. So your PDF FY of Y will be PI. So the first uh, P1 is 0.2, Delta X minus XI, so you'll have x minus x1, so you have x minus 2.1 plus 0 0.21 delta x minus 3.2 plus 0 0.19 delta x minus 4.8 plus 0 0.14 delta x minus 5.4 plus 0 0.26 delta x minus 6.9. Right. And then the next one is to plot the CDF and write the expression. So you have Y here and you have F Y of Y. So let me plot the values 2.1. You have 3.2. You have 4.8. You have 5.4 and then lastly we have 6.9 right so between 2.1 and 3.2 the value is 0.2 between 3.2 and 4.8 there'll be a cumulative value so you get 0.41 between 4.8 and 5.4 you have a cumulative value which is 0.6 between 5.4 and 6.9, you have a cumulative value, which is 0.74. And then starting 6.9, the value remains 1. So to write the expression for the CDF, Fy of y, we'll have five values. So you have Pi, P1, which will be 0.2 first value is uh, 0.2 and it, you write it in the form of unit step u of x minus 2.1 plus the second value is uh, 0 0.21 21 
subunit step x minus 3.2 plus plus 0 0.19 0 0.19 unit step x minus 4.8 plus 0 0.14 unit step x minus 5.4 plus 0.26 unit step x minus 6.9 Right. So that is how we can solve problems based on uh, uh, discrete random variables and uh, how to use the probability mass function. OK, so. I think we've solved a couple of problems on each PDF, CDF and PMF, so that will give you a good idea of uh, how we can solve numericals based on uh, these uh, these parameters. Here.